Hi everyone. This is Julie here with Yoga's Arc. We're going to do a class on happy back. I'll invite you to go ahead and have a comfortable seat if you're not already there. And as we settle in, maybe you've got a couple of blankets you'd like to bring for the practice. These are just blankets that I use to cover up on the couch. They're nothing special and you may or may not use them, but go ahead and have those ready. Here at Yoga's Art, we want you to put your health first. Yoga is an activity that requires physical exertion. Please ensure you're in the proper shape to do yoga. If you're unsure or if you have an existing medical condition, please consult your physician before beginning any yoga regimen. So with that, we're going to start on our backs. If you are working with blankets, you might take one and just place it on the mat. It's for your head. And you can see I've got my other blanket rolled up here. I'm going to put this underneath my knees. And then I'll just come to rest on my back. You will notice me looking at my iPad. I use it to keep time. So as I rest back, I've got my knees supported, I've got my head supported. I check in and I notice, how does my back feel? So if my back feels pretty comfortable, pretty relaxed, I can stay like this. If my back is feeling a little tight or a little pinchy, or I, I feel like this, like I've got my chin sticking up to the sky, a couple things, I can make the blanket under my head a little higher. I could bend my knees, plant the feet, and let those knees fall in together. Arms may feel good by the sides of the body. Arms may feel good on the tummy. Let those eyes close. Let yourself relax. And I'm gonna encourage you to stay here. We'll be here for a minute or two, just breathing, relaxing together. And what I'd like you to think about as you breathe is that you can inhale love. So I think that everything we do in life is based on love or based on fear. And you can consciously choose in this situation. I'm going to inhale love. I'm going to allow love to come into my body, into my lungs, into my breath. And if you're having a day where you're feeling fearful or you're feeling anxious, as you exhale, you can let that go. So as you inhale, you think love. And as you exhale, you can consciously release fear. Let's take about a moment. We'll breathe together in silence. Staying on the back, let those eyes open if you'd like. Bend your knees and plant your feet if you're not already there, and your blanket can stay here or you can move it. Let's go ahead and hug that right knee up into the chest, and we'll rotate the ankle, and then rotate the opposite direction. Check in and notice, does it feel good to extend that right leg? You can do it with the blanket under your leg, or you can remove the blanket. 
Just hold here for a moment, maybe hug that knee in just a little deeper. And then still checking in, maybe I keep my leg extended, maybe I bring that foot back to the floor. I'm gonna bring my hands behind my right thigh and let that leg go up to the sky. You can see my leg is always gonna be bent. That just feels better to me. To really straighten into that leg is not comfortable, but that might be more comfortable for you or a deeper bend may be more comfortable. Breathe here. And let that leg come down. Take a moment in symmetry. And then the second side, we're going to hug the left knee into the chest. I can rotate through the ankle. And I'm going to rotate both directions. And then when I'm done rotating, I check in and see do I want to extend my right leg. Be aware that maybe on one side you want to extend and on one side you don't. It's very normal, we're different side to side. And then we check in for lifting the leg. Perhaps I'm going to bring that right foot back to the mat, hands behind the left thigh. And again, I've got a bend in my knee, I can make it deeper. Some of you are gonna to want to straighten your leg. Notice what feels good for you. Always adjust the pose. You don't adjust your body, you adjust the pose. We wanna make the pose work for your body, not your body work for the pose. And let that leg come down. Arms come out to the sides. It's like I've made a big T. I'm going to take one palm and put it down. My opposite palm is up. Take my right ankle to my left thigh. So my legs are like a figure four shape. And then as I exhale, I'm going to drop my knees towards the palm that's down. As I inhale, I come center, reverse the palms. And now my legs drop the opposite direction. So inhale, I come center, palms reverse. Exhale, I'm dropping towards whichever palm is down. And maybe it feels good to just let that head go away from the knees. So if my knees are dropping to the right, my chin turns to the left. If my knees drop left, my chin turns right. This is a great little exercise to open up your hips. It's also a great exercise if you have a busy brain because it gives you a lot of different things to do. Let's do one more to each side. And when we come center, bring that right foot down Take that moment, find symmetry. And then left ankle to the right thigh. Once again, one palm down, one palm up. Legs always drop to the palm and stand. Maybe your chin turns away from the legs. Inhale, center, reverse. Exhale. Back and forth. So again, if you have a busy brain, your legs are doing one thing, your arms are doing another, and your chin is doing something. There's just a lot. It's very helpful. Lots of things to focus on. Let's do one more to each side. When we talk about having a happy back, we need to have our hips happy as well. Obviously, it's all connected. So we come center, we're going to let that left foot come down to the mat. Let's go ahead and roll to our right side. And then we'll just use that top hand, bring ourselves right up to sitting. Let me just adjust this. I seem to have gotten a little off kilter there. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and find a comfortable sitting position. And maybe you take your blanket. I like to have it folded up 
so I can place it underneath my glutes. And then I'm sitting, I'm half on, half off the blanket. Finding that nice tall spine and having that support of the blanket just helps me to keep my spine taller. From here, let's go ahead and rotate through the neck and we're gonna do this slowly. So when we rotate, we always go slowly. We just wanna make sure that we're not moving through something that the body prefers we don't. So you'll go chin to chest, ear to shoulder, let that head drop back. Nice, slow circles, relaxing. Just close your eyes here, that can feel pretty good. And then reverse, go the opposite direction. chin comes to the chest, we'll just lift right up to center. Go ahead and extend those legs forward so I'm sitting with my legs in a V. I bring my hands forward and clasp them and then I stir, just like I'm making a big pot of food. So this is the same motion we did with the neck, now I'm doing it with the spine. When you come center, notice which thumb's on top. Put the opposite thumb on top. Stir the opposite direction. Good, and maybe you get a nice little pop out of your back. And then hands come to center. From here, let's go ahead and bring our right leg in just like I was going to sit cross leg and I'll take my left knee to the sole of my right foot. I call these mermaid legs. I think in yoga they're actually called stag or deer legs. Take your right hand on the mat near your right hip. Left hand comes onto the left hip. And I'm going to lift this left hip. It's a subtle movement. So I just lift and lower, lift and lower. It's just a little more work for the hips. If someone tells me their back hurts, maybe it's their neck, maybe their shoulders, maybe it's their hips. It can be all sorts of things that create pain in your back. So of course, everything's interconnected. So we're gonna work a few different areas. And next time that comes down, Let's go ahead and we're going to switch these legs around. So same position on the second side, we just flip. Now it's as though my left leg is sitting cross leg. My right knee is to the sole of my left foot. Uh, right hand on right hip, left hand on the floor. And again, lift and lower. So when we do these poses where we go side to side, you may notice, oh, it's very different on one side. One side may feel much tighter. One side may feel much more open. That's normal. So don't tell yourself it's not normal. We are not symmetrical. You are going to feel different side to side. And let's just do two more here. And let that go. Coming onto our hands and knees, maybe you take a blanket and you place it underneath your knees, just a little extra cushion, a little extra pad in there. That usually feels pretty good to me. So I've got my knees right underneath my hips. I'm gonna come onto my hands from here and I am comfortable to have my shoulder, elbow, wrist in one line. I turn my fingers pretty far out to the sides to do that. So for you, it might feel better to have those hands forward. Remember, we're adjusting the pose to work for you. We're not adjusting your body. So we all have different bodies. We're all gonna feel good different ways. So we come onto hands and knees, whatever that looks like for you. And as you inhale, you drop your belly, tailbone and the back of the head go high. As you exhale, tuck chin, tuck tailbone, round your back to the sky. Inhale, drop, this is cow pose. And I'm not leading with my chin, I'm letting the back of my head do the work. Exhale, round. Inhale, exhale. 
let's do a few more here. We inhale and exhale. And just one more, inhale and exhale. So that's cat cow, and that is happy back pose number one. And while we're here, let's walk our hands forward, tuck the toes so my toe prints are on the mat. Now as I exhale, I press back. This is gonna stretch the entire back body, even the soles of my feet, because my toes are tucked. I inhale through center, exhale, drop my hips. This is a back bend. And you have control. You don't have to come this far forward. Inhale, center, exhale back. Inhale, center, exhale back. And I could stop right here. You'll know. You'll come into it and you'll know, oh, that's too deep, or I want to back off. Listen to your body. So these bodies, this is the body we get. We're going to live with this body for some of us close to 100 years. So we want to be friendly with the body. I don't want to be telling my body, hey, you have to do, uh, you know, over splits. You have to be able to do these crazy poses. I want to find work that agrees with me and my body. <laughs> All right. So this time as we come to center, untuck your toes. I'm still going to keep my knees underneath my hips. I'm walking my hands forward. This is a downward puppy pose. I'm going to sink my head down to the mat. This is going to stretch the back all the entire back. You're really going to feel this nice lean between the shoulder blades. So if you came into this and it's just not quite your cup of tea, a couple things we do differently. You could always stack hands and let your head come down. You're still going to get the stretch. And depending on what's going on with your back, this may feel like a better stretch. You can also bring one arm across the mat, one hand forward, let your forehead come onto that arm. And maybe you want to try several of these. So just notice what feels good for you. Again, honoring your unique anatomy. And if you've got one arm across the mat, let's go ahead and reverse that. If you're in asymmetry, you always want to balance out. Breathe here. And just find one more breath. As you lift your head, we're going to walk ourselves back. We're going to be sitting hips to heels. So sitting hips to heels may not be a great pose for you today. Find a way to sit comfortably. I just want you to be in a comfortable sitting pose. This is a great pose for me because again, it helps me to be upright. It's very hard for me to slouch when I sit this way. It did take me quite a while of studying yoga to make friends with this pose. So it's not a pose that we naturally find ourselves coming to. I'm going to do just a couple of poses for our posture. So from your comfortable seat, whatever that is, you bring those arms out to the sides. And this is the grip I want you to have. I've got my fingers bent just at that first knuckle. My thumb is pointing out to the side. So I'm going to start with my fingers pointing, or my thumbs pointing forward, and I'm circling forward. We'll do 10. So we'll do one, two, three. Think of those shoulder blades coming together. I think that's seven, eight, nine, ten. Reverse. Now your thumbs go backwards. And we'll do one, two, feel the shoulder blades. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take a moment, let those arms rest. You can actually do up to 40 of those. And that's just great for the posture. You can feel how it pulls those shoulder blades back into position. We naturally do this when we drive, when we work on computers, when we sit. So we want to remind the shoulder blades back, back. Last one, we find that nice little golf grip again. Hands come onto the temples. We're gonna to touch our elbows together and then open wide. If you were standing at a wall, you'd actually open wide enough for your elbows to touch the wall. So you do one and open. Two and open. Three, open, four, open. 
and five open and let that go. Again, if you are doing this at home, you can do that one up to 30 times. So it might be something you build up to, just seeing what works for your body. But those are just some nice little posture moves to help remind those shoulders that they can open up. Remember, we're working with love. So if we have love, our heart is open. If we have fear, our heart is closed. So today we're gonna to work on an open heart. We're gonna to come to a standing position. I will guide us up through downward facing dog. If you don't want to come up that way, come to standing any way you wanna get there. So for those that wanna come through down dog, we're going to come onto our hands and knees. And from here, we'll tuck the toes and we'll press our hips up and back. Now you can see when I come into down dog, I have pretty deeply bent knees. Then I'm just going to walk my hands back to my feet. This puts me in a forward fold. Once I'm in a forward fold, my hands come onto my waist and I simply roll myself up. So if you join us to standing through a different way, you're exactly where you need to be. We're going to do some side bends and first take a moment, stand, feet should be hip width apart, and just notice how you stand. So for me, I tend to stand more on the outer blades of my feet. And if I think of my feet as having four corners, to stand equally, I actually have to turn and press down on the inside. And that's a very stable stance. So we've talked about opening the heart, and I'm talking about grounding down through the feet. This is a power position. So I'm gonna present with love. I need to be grounded, I need to feel very powerful. So think of that, think of all four corners of your feet touching, and that's gonna help you too. When I do that, I automatically stand a little taller. You know, we all naturally stand one way. If, if I just am standing and not thinking, I'm doing this. <laughs> so I have to think, how do I ground through all my, all four corners of the feet, and how do I open that heart? Notice how that feels, it's an energetic shift. Let's go ahead and keep our right arm down by the side, Bring that left arm up and just lean over. So you're opening up the left side of the body and even reach with those fingertips. Oh, feel that. You should feel it all the way down in your hip. Breathe here. Big inhale, come center, let that arm go. We're gonna reverse it. Bring your right arm up and we're gonna open the right side. And again, this may feel very different side to side. Don't forget to reach reach with your fingers and then inhale back to center let that hand come down and this time let's inhale both arms overhead and I'm going to bring my hands together releasing my index fingers maybe my arms come next to my ears maybe I find a little bend here it's usually more comfortable for me to bend hard to keep my palms together and arms next to ears and then once again I'm going to inhale and grow tall and I'm going to lean over, open the right side. Big inhale back to center. Here we go, second side. Open the left, rounding through all four corners of the feet, keeping my heart open. Inhale, exhale those hands right down to the heart. Stay just where you're facing. I'm gonna turn sideways. And again, I've still got my feet about hip distance apart here, placing my hands on my low back, just like I was gonna put them into pants pockets. So I tuck my tailbone, and you can see that press my pelvis forward, and then I'm gonna let my chest lift towards the sky. So it's my chest, not my chin, that's my chin. This is a back bend. And then you check in, maybe you back bend a little deeper. Inhale, let's go ahead and come back to center. Release those arms down to the sides. And I want you to step wider than your hips. You can see my feet are pretty far apart here. I've got my toes in, my heels out, and I'm going to do something called dragon tails. So I'm first going to turn my whole body towards my left leg, and that's gonna lift my right heel. And then I'm gonna come back the other direction. 
this is not yoga, it's Tai Chi, but it's, it's a nice relaxing movement. And I used to do this when I had an office job and my back would get tired later in the day. So we turn and let the arms swing and the hips lift, or the heels lift. And then as I'm doing this, maybe I start going pretty fast and my hands are just kind of hitting me on my sides gently, not violently. <laughs> And just a couple more here. Ooh, that feels good. All right. Hands come onto the hips. We're going to step ourselves back to our power position, standing tall. And just because I like to do some balance work, we'll bring our hands to heart center. Find a point to look at, something that's not moving. And I want you to ground through your left leg. So your left foot grounds. And we take the right foot and I'm going to find tree. So tree might be a kickstand. I can actually rest the arch of my right foot on my left. I can bring my right foot to the inside of my left leg. If you want, you could actually grab your left leg and bring it all the way up to the inside of your thigh. Think of all the muscles drawing in. And maybe those arms grow up to the sky. Let those hands come down to heart center. Step that foot down. Take a moment, we're here, we're back in symmetry. And then we'll find the second pose. So I'm going to ground through my right foot this time and choose. Toes on the ground, you can rest the left foot on top of the right, you can bring that to the inside of the right leg or even all the way up to the thigh. Remember when we held our hands together and released index, maybe this time that's what we grow to the sky. Zip everything into the midline. If you fall out of a balance pose, you are learning. So remember that you're training your nervous system to do new things. Exhale down, release that foot. Take a moment, just shake it off, let it go. Good job. Big inhale, arms up. Exhale right through the center. Let's do two more. We inhale up, look up, we find just a tiny back bend. Exhale down. One more, inhale up, exhale. This time as we come down, we're gonna come all the way onto the mat. So I'm back in my hands and knees. I'm actually coming into a child's pose. I'll let my big toes touch. For me, I like knees wide. And then I stretch my arms forward, sink my hips back. Again, stretching into the back. So if your head doesn't want to come down to the mat, we make those little fists. You could rest that way. I'm going to have you just stay here. Notice how you feel. Notice any differences in the body. I've been practicing for a little while. And again, as you inhale, think to yourself, love. If you're feeling tension or fear, Release it as you exhale. Let's take about a minute here, relaxing, breathing together. child's pose and walk our hands over to the right. If I'm still in child, I walk myself over to the right and that may change. My head may need to come off the floor. I may need to put a hand under my head. You're opening up the left side of the body. And then we'll walk back to center. We walk our arms over to the left to open up the right side. 
So if you're right-handed like I am, my right side is always so much tighter. So if you notice that and you're doing this at home, you could actually do the right side twice or you could hold the right side for longer. If it isn't tighter, you don't have to do that, but it's just a suggestion. And again, walk yourself back to center. Bring those hands back to the knees. Press yourself up. We're going to return to a sitting position. And this time I'm going to extend my left leg out to the side. Sole of my right foot comes to the inside of my left leg. So we're coming into a pose called Janusirsasana, and this is also a happy back pose. And I'll review. There's four poses, and we've um, I've called out a couple of them, but I'll review and make sure you know what the poses are. So Janusirsasana, forehead to knee pose. Unless you really are determined to get your forehead to knee, I'm not worried about that. But if you want to, I'll show you the trick. Bend your knee and your forehead down. There you go. All right, kidding aside. We're going to fold over this leg and I'm thinking of my heart energetically moving towards my knee. It's gonna stretch the back of this leg and it's gonna stretch my lower back on the side where the leg is bent. So I'll take a moment here, I'll inhale and grow tall. As I exhale, I turn toward the extended leg and then I just walk myself forward. So obviously you can see my head is nowhere near my knee. If the stretch on the back of the leg is not what you're looking for today, bend that leg. That's gonna help take that stretch, you know, just decrease it a little. If the stretch either in the leg or in the low back is a bit much, Bring yourself up to sitting. Conversely, if you came forward and you thought, well, it's pretty easy, you can always think about walking those hands a little farther forward, and then you just play with it. You're just checking in, noticing how does my body feel? Do I want to come deeper? Do I want to back out? And giving yourself permission to do that. So maybe you come deeper for a breath or two, and then you back out for a breath or two. Remember that we are adjusting the pose to work for you. We're not adjusting you to work for the pose. I'd like everyone to stop thinking there's a perfect pose or this is the right way to do the pose. I want you to do the pose in a way that's safe. I don't want you to get hurt, but I want you to do the pose in a way that it benefits you. So remember, back of the leg is getting a stretch and then the side where the leg is bent, that lower back. Let's go ahead and continue to breathe here. We'll take uh, maybe close to a minute, just resting and relaxing here, giving ourselves permission to come in and out of this pose, coming deeper, backing off. You may just notice as you hold here, you naturally are gonna come a little deeper because your muscles start to release and relax. And I don't know if you can see, my knee is bent a little bit. It's not all the way to the floor. And this is a, it's a very intense stretch. And let's go ahead, we use our hands. We're gonna come right back up to sitting. We'll just switch that around so we Extend the right leg, bring the sole of the left foot to the inside of the right leg. Inhale, we grow tall. Exhale, turning towards the extended leg, and I'm folding forward. Once again, I'm thinking of my heart heading towards my knee. Remember, if the back of this leg is saying, wow, this is pretty intense, bend it. If your left lower back is saying, this is too much, Sit up. Always use your breath. Your breath is a great indicator. So when we come into a pose that is working well for us, we can breathe pretty easily. I'm doing this practice and I can talk because I'm making the poses work for me. So if I come into a pose that doesn't work for me, maybe I hold my breath or I can't talk or I'm breathing sort of rapidly. And that's my body's way of saying, hey, we can make a better choice here. 
So keep that in mind. And you play with this. You come in, you back out. Think of that back being nice and tall, that heart heading towards the knee. Chin's gonna stay down. Your chin always wants to do this. Keep it down. Breathe here. And we've just got about 30 seconds or so. Think about inhaling love. If you're feeling tension as you exhale, think about that tension going. You're just letting it go. Last couple of breaths. And then we use the hands and we walk ourselves back up. We're gonna come onto our backs and we're not coming into our resting pose just yet, but have those blankets nearby in case you want to use them because we'll finish the same way we started. So for now, we bend the knees, plant the feet, roll ourselves onto our backs. And we're gonna do some ab work. So part of why you may have back pain is that your abs need to be stronger. I like to do pretty easy crunches. I'm not gonna do anything crazy heroic here. I'm gonna put my hands behind my head. My elbows are open wide. And I'm gonna lift my chest towards the sky. So here we go. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And let yourself come back, take a moment and relax. So the second set, you can do the same thing. The second set, if you felt like the first set was pretty easy, bring your knees up. So I've got my legs in an L shape and I'm gonna see if I can keep those legs together. And then here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Relax back. Let those feet come down. Right foot to the right edge of the mat, left foot to the left edge. Let those arms come out like a T. Your palms are up to the sky. Let's let both knees drop to the right. Chin is gonna to turn to the left. Coming into a twist. Release and relax. Notice how that feels in your abdomen. That's good for us. Abdominal work can be challenging, but very good for us. Remember to inhale love. And let those legs come to center, chin comes center, legs drop left, chin goes to the right. Twist on the second side. You can close your eyes here, it's pretty relaxing to twist. This can also be helpful for your back. And now we come back to center. I'm gonna just quickly review our poses specific for the happy back before we do our Shavasana. So pose number one is your cat-cow. This is from hands and knees. In cat-cow, we are inhaling and exhaling. Pose number two is downward puppy, arms forward, dropping down. That's gonna stretch the spot in between your shoulders. Pose number three is a side bend. So we did quite a few of those. We did them standing with one arm and both arms. We did them from child's pose. You could do them sitting. 
those are great. If you have any issues with your back, those are definitely going to be helpful. And then the fourth pose is John Usher Sasana. I have one leg extended, one leg bent, and I'm holding forward over the extended leg. So those are my four poses I think are magic if your back is bothering you. And let's rest. Let's go ahead and find some rest. So if you want to set up just like you did for the beginning of class, you're going to take one blanket, place that for your head, and then maybe you've got another blanket that goes underneath your knees. Remember if the blanket under the knees didn't work, keeping knees bent, letting them relax together. We come to rest on our backs. Let those arms relax. Let your eyes close. Notice how your back feels. Notice if you've created some space. If it feels a little more relaxed. If it was uncomfortable to straighten your legs, check in and see does it feel a little better now? We're going to have you stay here for a few minutes, relaxing, breathing. Shavasana is a great time to integrate everything we've done in the practice. Be patient with yourself as you work on your back. So remember that whatever is causing you to have some back discomfort, it didn't happen overnight, and our work also won't fix it overnight. But it will fix it, you'll feel better, you'll start to notice. Let's close our eyes. Once again, as you inhale, you think love. If you're holding any tension, as you exhale, you release it.
to move. Press wrist and ankle, softly rotate. Take a moment, turn your chin to the left. Just hold, stretch here. And as you inhale back through center, chin goes to the right. Inhale back to center, you're gonna to roll to your left side. Take a couple breaths when you get here, we're not in a hurry. Use that top arm, bring yourself back up to a comfortable seated position. So if we choose love, we're choosing love over fear. Abhaya mudra, right hand extended, just like I'm telling someone stop. No fear, fearlessness. Think about this, no fear, we're going to choose love. Bring those hands together to heart center. Deep, deep inhale, feel that love. Exhale, release all the tension. Thank you so much for being here today. Namaste. Thanks everyone. Hope your back feels better. Notice which exercises worked. Maybe you make a little note on a sticky and maybe you do that exercise tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.